complexity, beauty, and truth can be found in a good work of art. The same can be said for the processes of creating it. Next on Elevate Iowa, Justin, Mike, and Kyle attempt to leave a legacy of art at Northwest Iowa Community College by welding their school's first ever art installation. Welcome to the new Iowa. Elevated past all notions of manufacturing. Where manufacturing is exciting, clean, and a career worth talking about. The Iowa Advanced Manufacturing Grant paid for the state's 15 community colleges to focus on manufacturing in new and meaningful ways. And these are their stories. Even though your grandmother might have told you that idle hands are the devil's workshop, in the case of Justin Vandenberg, his idle hands started a small-scale art project that would challenge his welding skills. The challenges of his small project would eventually become a topic of school-wide conversations. I don't remember how long we were into school yet, but um, we had a day to where it was kind of just a relaxed day to where I had caught up on all my schoolwork that I was leading up to the point of where we are in class to where we could, you know, kind of design something or, or build something like we wanted to. The way this started, um, Justin was bored one day and came to me and asked if, uh, if he could uh, go on Google Images and try to find something to make. He was tired of uh, doing the repetitive uh, T-welds and lap welds. So he went on Google Images, found a, a similar piece on, uh, out there that uh, was uh, somebody made for some lawn art. He asked if he could make that and I agreed, yep, go ahead, you know, have some fun with it. About two hours later, he came up with the piece that, that's behind us here. We, Put it out in the display case and caught a lot of eyes. And it's a different design, and so we put it out in the display case, and it got some recognition from the other students walking by and staff. One thing led to another. There was a suggestion on putting something on campus because our campus is pretty barren out here in Iowa. <laughs> Chatter about the small sculpture became a cry for a large-scale outdoor installation. Could they build a significant work of art? Could they find the resources to accomplish such a daunting task? Justin teamed with Kyle and Mike to see if they could champion the massive task of scaling their model from the size of a football to the size of a truck. We built several little ones, kind of getting the process down. The process of, because you know, all your angles that you have to cut all the tubing and then you get to get that all fitted up right was a kind of a task <laughs> in itself. Get everything, you know, aligned and square and all your lines, this is just square tubing in flange. And then we'd have to cut you in your 90 degree angles. But your 90 degree angles were on different sides on each tube that you cut. So in order to get them to fit up correctly and squarely, um, it took a little bit of finessing and Four of each of these machines, so 252 Miller Maddox, uh, the Synchrowave 210s. The robotic cell here, the System 20, is the biggest purchase that we, uh, that we bought with IM Grant. So then we ended up building this version, which is kind of what we call our, our final prototype. And I brought it to Alitha Stuby, the president of NCC, and uh, basically said, this is what we'd like to build for our project. And she said, well, we need a little bit more information on it, like what we're actually gonna, how big it's actually gonna be, what it's gonna cost, that kind of stuff. And so that's where I kind of started drawing it up on, on uh, Autodesk Inventor. The team's digital draft helped people compare the desktop-sized model to the larger vision. The drawing helped sell the value of the project, but even more importantly, key design and safety issues came to light. And then eventually we ended up having to figure out if this thing was going to balance itself after we, we found out it was going to probably weigh over 2,000 pounds. And what we had to do to actually mount in the ground to make sure that it wasn't going to blow over in a storm or, you know, some, some tragedy happening. AutoCAD. A lot of AutoCAD. We were able to... Basically, we were able to build it in AutoCAD with the exact dimensions where we wanted it, and that was able to give us the center of mass, and off the center of mass, we were able to essentially say, all right, this is what we need to do in order to mount it correctly. 
Not only that, we had to figure out how we were going to build this project in the shop due to confined space. We ended up going with a forklift and a crane. Boom truck. Boom truck. Boom truck. The power line yeah. boom truck. Since we break stuff, I mean, we're, we're line workers, so we break things. Um, I'm over here every now and then for some repairs and different items. And uh, I was over here one time and the students were in the process of building a small uh, model that they made. And uh, I was impressed with it. I was a little concerned when they started talking about uh, the item would weigh about 2,300 pounds. Uh, they didn't really have the equipment to properly manipulate it so they could weld on it and do the things they needed to do with it. So since my program has uh, cranes, we came up with our cranes and moved it around periodically for them so they could safely weld it. It presented a challenge uh, with how massive the tubes were. Well, and when we were welding these pieces, we actually welded everything we could. We had it on a trailer when we were welding it, and then we'd pull it out of the, the shot. We'd call up Scott, and he'd come over, and we'd flip it. We'd tell him exactly how we wanted to flip it to the, so we could get to the next welds. We'd put it back on the trailer, roll it back and into the, back shop, in the shop, and then weld what we could. It was actually surprisingly quicker than we thought it was going to be. I think we did it from when we got the parts sent here. I think, I think it took just about a week to get everything welded and everything, yeah. At the Days of Thunder homecoming events, Michael, Kyle, and Jason revealed a 14-foot, 2,300-pound, expertly welded sculpture whose presence is a testament to the skill and will of these students. It also holds great meaning. Its name, life. Looking at it, there are actually 12 different members. And going through there, if you, if you look into it, they say there are 12 different times within your life cycle. You could be at a corner in your life and you're going along and all of a sudden something could change drastically. You go, you're all of a sudden taking a corner in a different direction, you, but you look back and you're really not that far from where you started. And the reason we called it life is because of the, the parts of it. Um, when you walk around it, it means something different to everybody, which is what makes it art, you know? Uh, from different locations and different angles that you look at, sometimes it looks like a couple of boxes, sometimes it looks like a Superman symbol, sometimes it looks like two hearts tied together, you know? From some angles, it's kind of Celtic. I love welding because uh, you can create just about anything you can think of. It has brought a lot of pleasure to other students and faculty and the staff here. This is a proud piece of the campus. 